Hello, and welcome to Children's Liturgy. If we haven't already met, my name is Margaret Johnson, and I'm the Director of Religious Education here at St. John Fisher Church in Rancho Palos Verdes, California. Welcome back. I'm glad that you're joining me today. Today is a special feast of the Church, the Feast of the Holy Trinity. The Trinity is a difficult concept to understand. We tend to say, well, it's a mystery. But the idea really is that although there is only one God, God can take on three persons. God exists in three persons. The main thing to remember, though, is that it's all about love. And we're going to learn more about that today. Let's start with our opening prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all creation, you embrace us with the love of a mother and father. You send your own Son, Jesus, to save us. Through the power of your Holy Spirit, you raise us to everlasting life. Your life is a mystery that we will celebrate and proclaim forever and ever. Amen. We've been reading from the Acts of the Apostles for a long time now. Today we have something completely different, a reading from the book of Exodus, which is near the beginning of the Bible. Listen to this story about Moses and think about what we learn about God from this story. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses did exactly what the Lord had told him. He got up early and carried the two stone tablets up the side of Mount Sinai. The Lord came down in a cloud and stood beside Moses. Then he said, I am the Lord. He also walked up and down in front of Moses and said, I am the Lord God, and I am kind and merciful. I don't easily lose my temper and my love can be trusted. Moses quickly bowed low. He worshiped and said, Lord, if you are pleased with me, then don't leave your people. We are stubborn, but I beg you to forgive our terrible sins and let us be your very own people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So you'll notice at the beginning of this story, we heard about two tablets. Those are the tablets on which were written the Ten Commandments. And the Ten Commandments were a covenant that God made with his people. God was making a promise that he would love us, and he told us the things that we needed to do to be faithful to him. Look also at what an amazing thing it must have been for Moses to have God walk with him and talk with him. I think that must have been incredible. And then listen to what God said about himself. God said, I am kind and merciful. I don't lose my temper easily. My love can be trusted. We know that God is a kind and loving parent to all people. God wants to take care of us. That's pretty great, isn't it? Sometimes people are afraid of God, but we don't need to be. From God's own words, we know that we can trust God to be kind and loving. Now, because today is Trinity Sunday, I want to make sure that we cover all three readings because we need to think about all three persons of God. God the Father, the creator, the lawgiver we heard about with Moses, God, the Holy Spirit, who we will hear a little bit about in our next reading, and Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who we'll talk about in the gospel. This second reading is from one of St. Paul's letters to the early Christians. St. Paul taught the early Christians about Jesus, but he also talked about God the Father and about the Holy Spirit. So listen to what he wants to tell us. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. 
Goodbye, my friends. Do better and pay attention to what I have said. Try to get along and live peacefully with each other. Now I pray that God, who gives love and peace, will be with you. Give each other a warm greeting. All of God's people send their greetings. I pray that the Lord Jesus Christ will bless you and be kind to you. May God bless you with his love, and may the Holy Spirit join all your hearts together. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. St. Paul was telling the people who lived in the city of Corinth about God's love. He told them to live peacefully and to try to get along with each other. And this is how he ended his letter. I pray that the Lord Jesus Christ will bless you and be kind to you. May God bless you with his love and may the Holy Spirit join all your hearts together. He's talking about the Holy Trinity, the three persons in one God, and all of them, all of them are kind and loving. The Holy Spirit will help us join our hearts together with others. The Holy Spirit gives us all the gift of taking God's love and sharing it with other people. That's a great lesson for us to learn. Now we're going to turn to today's reading from the Gospel of John. This reading might be familiar to you. We hear it a lot. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, to God who is, who was, and who is to come. Alleluia, alleluia. 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 A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus told Nicodemus, God loved the people of this world so much that he gave his only son, so that everyone who has faith in him will have eternal life and never die. God did not send his son into the world to condemn its people. He sent him to save them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now, first of all, I want to explain who Nicodemus is. Nicodemus was one of Jesus' followers, but he was also an important person in Jerusalem, one of the religious leaders of the day. The story we heard today is about a time when Nicodemus came to see Jesus at night, when there was no one around, to talk about the things that Jesus was teaching about. And Jesus told him this beautiful thing, that God loved the world so much that he sent his son Jesus to us. Have you ever been lost? Maybe you got separated from your parents in a crowd, or you turned the wrong way on a walk and you weren't quite sure where you were supposed to be. It's scary to get lost. Sometimes you can find a map or someone gives you directions to help you find your way back. You've probably heard your parents listening to the navigation devices on their telephones or in their car, helping them find something that they're looking for while they're driving. Sometimes the only way to stop being lost is for someone to come to where you are and guide you back to where you need to be. Sometimes we get lost from God, too. We forget to pay attention to God, and we listen to what other people are telling us. We do what we want to do, instead of what we know is the right thing. God gave us the Ten Commandments and other scriptures to help us find the way back. That's sort of like a map or a navigation device. But we still get lost. Our loving and kind God understands that. Because we still get lost, he sent us his son, Jesus, to help us out. Jesus came to be with us here in this world so that he could guide us to the right place. Jesus told us how to live. Over and over, Jesus told us to be loving and kind, 
to help other people, and to remember that God always loves us. Even more, we heard last week that Jesus didn't just tell us all of this and then leave us. When he left to go back to heaven, he sent the Holy Spirit to be with us all the time to help us remember how we are supposed to live. Jesus didn't leave us alone. He sent us the Holy Spirit. Now think back on that gospel with me. Jesus told Nicodemus that God loved the people of the world so much that he gave his only son. God loves you, each one of you, so much that he sent Jesus to show you the way. God loves you, each one of you, so much that he sent the Holy Spirit to stay with you and help you remember what Jesus taught us. God loves every single person in the world. Never forget that. Every person is God's precious and beloved child. When we are mean or selfish to other people, we are being mean to one of God's children. Don't do that. Be kind. Be loving. That's what Jesus taught us to do. And that is what we are called to do and how we are supposed to live. That will help us stop being lost. Now let us pray together. As brothers and sisters in one loving family, together let us pray to our loving Father. For world, leady, uh, for world leaders, that they may make wise decisions for the good of all people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish, our family, and our friends, that we may all help to make this world a better place, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor and for all who suffer injustice, that through our kindness they may know that they are loved by God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are sick, and for all those who have died, especially any of our families and friends, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Take a moment now to think of any special prayers you might have, and lift them up quietly to God with us. For all these special intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, hear the prayers of your children and strengthen our faith and love for you and one another with the help of the Holy Spirit. We ask this through Christ your Son. Amen. Let us now pray together in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Thank you for joining me today. As always, children's resources can be found on our parish website sjf.org or on our school speak page. I'm happy to answer your emails or help you in any other way you might need assistance. I hope you'll join me again next week. I know we have opened our church and you are welcome to come, but we do have to limit the number of people who are coming because we are still trying to keep you safe and healthy. So I will be continuing to do the children's liturgy for you as long as it is needed. Until then, I hope that God's grace, mercy, and peace will be with you all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>